Hello everybody and welcome. This is Gretchen Heidel. This week in astrology, so it's Monday night on November 2nd until November 8th. Welcome. Gretchen Heidel, full-time astrologer, life coach, Reiki master, hypnotist, and so much more. I am here talking to you pre-election night. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's a lot going on um, and a lot of things that are going to be happening this week. Though this week is actually, ironically, a lot more sort of quiet, astrologically speaking, than other weeks in the past that I've been talking about. But make no mistake, there are some really, 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 really big energies kind of operating in the background and that I want to get into. So if you guys are just joining me live, welcome. I can see a bunch of people are signing on. Um, go ahead and post your astrological sign. Say hi. And I love to hear uh, where you guys are tuning in from. Uh, what what uh, uh, state are you guys watching from? And like and share. I love that. <laughs> So welcome everybody who's joining tonight. It is November 2nd, 2020, historical evening really, um, uh, where we're going to be uh, going into the election tomorrow. Um, and this is kind of history in the making. This is what I've been talking about all all this time, you know, um, since back in January um uh, you know, back in January of 2020. So welcome everybody who's joining. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Had to tune in tonight. <laughs> hey, Juliet and Darlene. Welcome. Please post your astrological sign. Lori Pisces, Vermont. Yes. Uh, Lisa Aries from Montreal. Welcome. Uh, uh, let's see. Hey, Julie, Los Angeles. Welcome. Naomi, Welcome. Uh, we have a lot of really good people uh, online here live watching, <laughs> just waiting a few minutes for people to join. So, all right, I'm going to get into it because I got I got charts of presidents sitting in front of me. You know, one of them is going to be a future president um, uh, here in my in my hand. We have I have some astrological charts. Um, and so I'd love to talk about the election a little bit, but I also want to talk about you guys and kind of what is going on. There's actually so much going on right now. Like, you know, I mean, you guys know if you've been watching me for any length of time, there's just so much going on. And really, we're just it, history in the making. I, I titled this year History in the Making. And for years and years now, I've been watching this year coming and coming and coming. And um, there's just a lot. There's a lot, uh, you guys know, planetary wise and, and all of that. So tomorrow, basically on election day, on November 3rd, um, Mercury is going to be turning direct. So Mercury has been retrograde all this time. Now it's finally turning direct and it's going to turn direct on the day of election time. And it's going to be the height of it. Okay. So just to let you guys know when it's going to actually be direct is 12 50 PM Eastern time. So earlier than that, if you're on the West coast at 9 50 AM Eastern time, and that's basically what the deal is. So Mercury right now is in Libra and Mercury this week is playing a huge role in all of this election stuff. Plus there's other things going on in the backdrop, but, but Mercury this week anyway, even if there wasn't election week would be a big thing. I mean, Mercury, first of all, when it turns direct, you guys know, I'm always telling you it's called stationary direct stationary retrograde, meaning that you remember the car analogy, right? So um, the car is going direct, then it stops, then it goes reverse, which is retrograde, then it stops stationary direct, then it goes forward. So when we talk about it stopping, it's literally going to be stopped for a few days, I think until the weekend. I, have, I didn't bring my book over here, but um, almost until the weekend, it's going to be stationary. What does that mean? And on top of it, it's forming a tight, and I mean a tight, contentious square with Saturn. So Mercury uh, is going to be retro is going to be stationary direct. Okay, yes, but it's going to be stationary before it's direct. So so it's not moving anywhere, and it's getting blocked by Saturn. Saturn is obstacles, delays, life lessons, karma. 
and uh, just, you know, obstacles and things that it's your life lesson. It's things that you have to kind of get over and, and like hurdles that you have to climb and walls you have to, you know, get over and all these things. And, and that's going to be squaring. So blocking Saturn also, or Mercury also. So we have sort of two things working against Mercury. Now, why is this so important for the election? Well, I just wanted to kind of just, you know, we're just talking here. You know, we're old friends. We're just talking. The charts, I have the charts of Donald Trump and Joe Biden, because I think we can all agree those are probably the two, the two candidates to watch. <laughs> I'm not watching Kanye. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> And I think none of us should be watching Kanye because we don't want to give that guy any more attention right now than anything. And it's not a joke to vote for him, by the way. Please don't vote for him. Okay, so so when we look at, uh, I'll just start with Donald Trump's chart because Donald Trump is powered by Mercury. Donald Trump is a is a uh, Gemini, okay, and he has Uranus and also the North Node of the Moon and the Sun all in Gemini in his 10th house of career, okay? Donald Trump, we do absolutely have the correct time of birth, location, everything. Joe Biden, we do not know because he told people from memory, okay? So this is basically where we think everything is time-wise. I mean, obviously the date and the location he knew, but he didn't know the time. And he said it from memory. So those were the two sources. And if you guys remember back in the Obama days when Donald Trump kept challenging President Obama's uh, birth certificate status, he himself had to put up his birth certificate uh, to be scrutinized by the public. So that's how we know uh, Donald Trump's uh, definitive date of birth and chart. And um, so that's a more re reliable in some ways. But, Joe, you know, Joe Biden's pretty good. I mean, like we, you know, most of the, everything wouldn't really change too much except for the rising sign, of course. And then that would change, you know, where things were if it was a different time. So getting back to that, by the way, Joe Biden's birthday is this month. He is a Scorpio, 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 Scorpio. <laughs> uh, he, his birthday is on November 20th, where Donald Trump is a Gemini. Now, why that getting back to Mercury and how that will affect Donald Trump? Well, Mercury retrograde, uh, Mercury is the ruling planet of all of his Gemini. So that is really uh, a thing. And also, even though he doesn't have a lot of planets or really any planets in Virgo, Virgo also powers uh, Mercury also powers Virgo. That's his first house of like kind of how he appears because he's very last degree of Leo rising. Okay, so basically with Donald Trump, um, that might cause a problem. That's going to potentially cause some kind of an obstacle, delay, or blockage. And he's, you know, maybe not kind of functioning as he should be, okay? I, I kind of highlighted here, Mercury right now is right here in his chart, okay, the third house, uh, which is communication, talking, pontificating, expressing himself, and all of those things. And then Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto is roughly at the end of his fifth house, which fifth house is his house of children, love, okay? Uh, but I mean, is that, you know, a, a big deal in this election? I mean, uh, you know, the other thing is, is that what is basically going to be happening here is that uh, that is also going to be opposing. So he's in a Saturn opposition right now. I'm sorry, it's over this side. I'm trying to do this backwards. So Saturn is right here right now, and it's opposing his natal Saturn in Cancer. Um, he has Saturn and Venus conjunct at the last degrees, 23 degrees Cancer. So that Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto thing is opposing Saturn. Well, when we oppose Saturn... Not much happens, not much gets done. Saturn oppositions are not like uh, uh, Saturn returns, but it's another point of where it's stuff is difficult. Um, and obviously he just, you know, have had COVID and all these other things. So when we talk about Donald Trump, he's actually getting blocked right now with Saturn. Saturn is opposing his Saturn, okay? Now, um... When we look at Joe Biden, I might be flip-flopping back back and forth, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys. Um, 
where his chart is, okay, so Mercury retrograde is actually in his 11th house. Now, 11th house is, is politics, it's humanity, it's how do we make the world a better place. So already Mercury retrograde is in a much better position than it is in Donald Trump's chart, which is really talking, speaking, pontificating, writing, emailing, and all of that. Um, so... He, 11th house is how we help people, okay? And that's, by the way, the natural area of Aquarius in anybody's chart. If anybody has 11th house planets, um, it's a very, like, usually that's the house of he, the humanitarian, okay? So so Mercury, Mercury retrograde is right there in his chart. Now, when we talk about where his Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto is, it's really in the middle of a second house of money and things he values and all of that. But what is this opposing? This is opposing Jupiter. Jupiter is good luck, good fortune, transformation, Phoenix, uh, uh, not fe not Phoenix rising, but it's, um, it, it's like, in other words, it's good luck, good fortune, optimism, expansion. Okay, so when we talk about where his Jupiter is, um, all of these planets are opposing that, which means it's going to trigger potentially good news, good fortune, some kind of a thing. Um, and that could be very beneficial for Joe Biden. So if you guys haven't read between the lines yet, my prediction and my inclination during this particular um, astrological based on what's going on in these two men's charts, it is looking more favorable for Joe Biden. Um, having said that, uh, I pulled cards also just to see because I keep I have all y'all have been asking me and texting me and writing me who's going to win what's going to happen uh, what do we need to brace ourselves for and here's the problem every single time I pulled a card on Donald Trump he kept getting the card of Mars and Mars is the god of war. So he's angry about however, whatever happens during this election, he's going to be mad or pissed or need to fight or feel like he needs to. So I feel that all of this is going to be uh, questioned. I mean, I feel like the results of the um, the election are going to be questioned. Um, I think it's going to be a slow process, even getting an accurate number. I think that it's going to be hard to to get final figures they might be contested and recontested and contested again um, because mercury is not moving properly M mercury just so that you guys know in case if you're new to watching my channel is how we how we move information and spreading news and spreading gossip and 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 how do we text and call and communicate so in general for everybody not just these two you know, presidential candidates or anybody else, we are in a communication blockage this whole week. So I've been telling people, have reel back your expectations. Um, if in your personal life, if you're trying to reach your your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your wife or your boss or, or somebody at the courthouse or who, whatever thing you're going through in your personal life, expect blockages because Mercury, again, is not really moving yet. And also Mercury is being blocked. I mean, blocked by Saturn. It's like a gridlock and it's just kind of, it's rough. So that's basically what's going to be happening this whole week for everybody. So make sure you drive really slow, make sure that you're, um, you're, you're taking your time, all of those things. Now, when it comes to how do we, how do we move this energy and how do we spread expectations and how do we, you know, do all that stuff. And with all the election and everything, Thing. It's going to be contested, I feel, A, number one, um, and it's going to be uh, a, like a slow trickle effect. It might be like before it's officially announced, it might be really um, slow. Uh, all of this, the whole thing is going to be slow. So I pulled cards, like I said, on both of both candidates and multiple times I got Mars, the god of war for Donald Trump. And it seems like he's going to be angry, mad or something, or maybe the world will be mad. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's another way to look at it. But either way, we got angry, contentious energy around him. When I look at Joe Biden's cards, I pulled the magician multiple times on his uh, on his election and on his thing. And what is the magician? The magician means you have everything you need. All you need to do is to do the thing. It's a very affirmative card. 
Um, and it's, it's not so much an, um, how do I say, like a predictive card of like, this is going to happen. It means that you have everything. So if I told you to build a shelf, it would mean you had the hammer, the wood, the nails, the glue, whatever. And all you had to do was build the shelf and put it together and put it up on the wall. And that's basically the card of the magician. The magician is a highly affirmative card. Like you got this boo. That's the kind of card that it is. If you just believe in yourself, you can do whatever it is you want to do. And I love that card, by the way. It's one of my favorite cards of the deck. So Joe Biden, I pulled cards, reshuffled, pulled cards, reshuffled, pull cards, reshuffled, and I got magician on Joe Biden three times. And then on Donald Trump, I did the same thing. And I got Mars three times on Donald Trump, which is like, hello. Um, I use, I use a different deck that's, it's, um, it's Linda Goodman's star cards, just to let you guys know, if you've ever had a reading with me, you know, you know, these cards. Um, and, uh, uh, they're based on a combination of tarot, numerology, and astrology. So there's elements of all three in the deck, but it's not a huge deck. So, but I, I kept repooling multiple cards, the same cards. So I'm, uh, again, that's the thing. So, so I feel like as if, um, there is definitely going to be a lot of, you know, contention around this election, whoever wins really, whichever side wins, whoever wins, I feel that this is going to be very contentious. I do feel, uh, that, like I said, that Joe Biden is going to win, but here's the tricky part. And some of you have seen me say this on a different, um, episode, but I will re to say it again. And I've been saying it. The election is taking place under the skies where it's called the Great Conjunction is going to be occurring. And that's between Saturn and Jupiter, okay? Whenever those two come together and whenever they have come together in history during an election, the president-to-be has died in office, there's only been two in the entire history of elections where this has taken place that didn't die. And it was George Bush and uh, Ronald Reagan. Now we know Ronald Reagan had a, an assassination attempt with a gun and then George Bush actually somebody mailed him like a bomb or I can't remember if it was a bomb or like acid or some kind of thing in the mail. So um, whoever... I have, I've said this before, but who, when you're voting, make sure you really like the vice president also, not just the president, but the vice president. Um, and that will be a thing. Now, when I look at the car, the charts of, um, Mike Pence and, uh, Kamala, I think it's, a, I can never say her name. I'm sorry. Um, um, Mike Pence, uh, also is a Gemini. So he has, he has a lot of planets in Gemini as well, okay? Um, he has uh, the sun, Mercury, and I think uh, the moon is last degree, Gemini. Yep, the moon is last degree. So he has a lot of Gemini energy, so this is also going to be affecting him as well. Uh, Kamala is a Libra. And actually, Mercury retrograde is actually going to be falling right on, almost on her sun, uh, but she is a Libra. She has also some Scorpio. Joe Biden's got a ton of Scorpio, but she also has a lot of Virgo, uh, Virgo in her chart. Um, so all of these, all of these uh, sort of people that are involved with the election all have heavy mercurial sort of things going on in their chart. But definitely Donald Trump and Mike Pence, because they both are Geminis, both of them. So this is a lot. This is a lot. So I want you to really pay attention to who the vice president is. And the other thing is, is that there is a movement that has been started. Um, and I don't see that going away anytime soon. Um, even if the figurehead is no longer part of that movement, there is a movement that has started in, in this country. And we have even more energy around that in the next coming years. Okay. So even in 2022, like I've ta talked to you guys about before, we're going to be in our, in our Pluto return and next year, uh, which is, which is by the way, what happened when, uh, when the constitution was developed. Okay. So that was kind of like during the American revolution. 
And then next year we have a return to almost like a same vibe as like the 1960s. So we have like a civil like unrest, you know, sort of protesting, like all this protesting stuff that's coming next year um, is going to just be like, I know that it kind of looks like it just started this year, uh, like, and then maybe it'll be over. But no, next year as we get in further, uh, there's going to be more protests, more things um, in reference to that. So even though... I'd love to say everything's going to just be great and like, you know, um, next year in 2021 will be amazing. It's going to be easier for sure. It's going to be easier, but not easy, not even by a long shot. So, so that's basically what the deal is, is that, um, uh, I feel like we all need to kind of just say prayers and pray for whoever is right for you and, and just please use your voice and vote if you haven't mailed it in or dropped it off yet. I dropped my, my ballot off and I know People say that, you know, it doesn't matter, it doesn't count, I would rather, you know, not waste my time, this, that, but I always say it's, it's okay, even if that's, even if it's true, um, it's energy, and we can, you can use your energy, and law of attraction has the word action in attraction, okay? So use your energy, okay? I don't care if you think it counts, doesn't count, it's waste of time, waste of paper, waste of whatever, I don't care. Just use your use your use your voice, uh, because that we all have that, at least it, and energetically. It's almost like when people come to me, they'll say, um, should I do dating apps? Like if they're single, they'll say to me, do, should I do a, dating apps? I say, sure. Because it's like it's like um telling the universe I'm open for business. I'm I'm accepting, you know, potential romantic suitors. And it's almost like putting an open sign on your door, you know, instead of having it look like it's closed, it's open and it's a way of energetically kind of like unblocking you. It's the same thing. I always say the same thing. It's very similar to that. You know, you just want to, you just want to use your, use your, uh, vote. Um, and just energetically, at least, you know, I said a prayer. Uh, I took my, I dropped mine off and I, I meditated with it in my car and I said a prayer and I placed it in the box, you know, and that, that was my energy, you know. Uh, so anyway, I hope that, that helps. Um, I've had a lot of people asking me what's going to happen, what's going to happen. Um, uh, somebody now, somebody uh, said here, um, will there be riots? And so, yes, I do feel that because what's happening here is we're being suppressed or repressed from Remember speaking or from um, communicating in any way. Whenever we were abutting, you know, we have Mercury abutting Saturn, and Saturn is a blockage where Mercury wants to just bzz, 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 do whatever. So, and we have we have that uh, Jupiter um, Pluto thing coming too. You know, the conjunction between Jupiter and Pluto, and that's going to be a big thing. And Mars is still retrograde, so there's just a lot. You know, there's still a lot of energy. Now I'm trying to I'm scanning here, and for some reason I had the I had the um, the date for this. Oh yeah, it's on the twelfth. Uh, so the Jupiter Pluto conjunction is on the twelfth. Now Jupiter and Pluto coming together. I mean. Pluto is terrorism, fanaticism, um, uh, extremism, um, anything that's real extreme. Even I'm not talking about right or left side or any side. I'm talking about it, it can be, it can be, it's like cults. It can be religious uh, fanatics. It can be, you know, political fanatic. It, it's really like anything that's really extreme. And that's another component to this election on November 12th. They're coming together. But when I say coming together, if you look at the charts right now, they're together because they're big, slow moving planets. So, so like if, if I say coming together, it's more like doop, like it's just like they're already sitting right next to each other. So and they're in Capricorn, remember. So uh, it's a shakeup of our structure. It's a shakeup of something that's, you know, uh, established. It's 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 shaking up the government. It's shaking up, you know, all kinds of different things. So that's a c component. There's a lot of very um, contentious, but but yet huge energy that's around this election, but also around 2020 and also around, you know, all of this COVID stuff. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. So people are very extreme right now and they're in, 
in how, how they're feeling and there's there's no neutrality in other words it's all right or left or up and down and and, and backwards again so what do we do what do we do during all of this so first of all i said you know we got to take a deep breath okay mercury being square and not moving at the same time. So it's just, it's square and then it's like sitting there in, in being square. It's not like doing anything. It's just square er, and then stops. Usually it squares and moves on. This week, again, a really weird thing that's not usual. It's square and sitting there. So yesterday on Sunday, uh, Mercury and Saturn came to an exact square and that was at 2.06 p.m. Eastern Time on November 1st. And then on Friday, November 6th, it's squaring, peaking again. So they don't really move. They're just kind of doing something like this and then they move on. Um, and so even Friday, so it's just going to be active all week. So what do you do? Okay, I'm just telling you, lower your expectations a little bit when it comes to communication. Okay, don't have a big talk with your partner. Don't have a big talk with your boss. Don't have a big talk with your coworker. This is not the time to have the big talk, okay? This is the time to choose peace, okay? Mercury's in Libra. Can't we just get along? You know, we got to cho choose peace, okay? So so remember, Libra is love and wants partnership and wants relationships. I know so many of my clients are calling me like, I'm going to text him or her and tell him or her this and this. And I'm like, no, don't. Step away. Count to 10 <laughs> before you respond and step away from your cell phone, okay? Um, so there's that. And remember that there is love, okay? Like, we do have to remember love, okay? Remember I was talking about Mercury and Libra before with, with uh, Rose Quartz, okay? That's channeling our love, okay? We got to channel the love. Saturn is still in Capricorn, so it's all that Capricorn energy of, you know, structures are falling, you know, things that were created as we know it is stopping. There's still going to be tons of Capricorn energy going on um, until the planets move into Aquarius next year. So basically, you know, or really at the end of this year, but basically we're just going to have to, you know, kind of be, there's still, there's still going to be a lot of status quo, like everything's kind of really still... Uh, for people who are more on the liberal side, there's a lot of conservative energy still in the background. And that's why I feel like maybe not a lot of things are going to be accomplished during this next uh, four years. I mean, because there might be the opposing energies might be too. They're not working uh, together as a team. They're sort of blocking each other. So, I mean, it is what it is. That's basically what I feel is is sort of the backdrop of kind of what's happening. So the other thing is we do have the last quarter lunar cycle coming on Sunday and that is going to be on no, uh, uh, November 8th and that is going to be in Leo. Okay, so 8.46 a.m. Eastern Time, it will be in Leo and that's a time of like a reevaluation. They call it a time of like crisis or a reevaluation in astrology. Now, if you think about it, we're purging and getting rid of something right we're purging and getting rid of because we just went through the full moon last week now we're at the last quarter lunar cycle on sunday and that's basically where we're going to be really like evaluating what do we need to get rid of because the following week we get the new moon coming in scorpio um uh the new moon's gonna be in scorpio which is again in joe biden's chart he's all scorpio uh where the last quarter lunar cycle where we're purging and getting rid of something Leo is Donald Trump's rising sign. So again, there's another kind of indication of an ending potentially coming or a new beginning. Um, and the other thing is too, uh, Donald Trump, I, I've talked to a lot of people about this privately. Um, I don't think I've talked about it on the broadcast. But I just want to say here, Donald Trump is actually right at the precipice or threshold of entering into his health cycle. Okay, this whole thing is a health cycle. Um, I know he had COVID, and I know they've said he's fine, and I know all of that stuff. I've heard, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard that. However, I he's he's really facing something big here, um, and he has a lot of like heart, stroke, blood stuff in his chart. So we'll see what ends up happening with him. Um, you know, again, 
if whatever president is elected, remember when I said, you know, sometimes they don't live through the presidency. Not only was it like Abraham Lincoln went through that, um, uh, uh, Kennedy went through that, all the different uh, people that have died in office, but also presidents that just died of a heart attack or had a stroke or something in office. Um, and that was going back over 100 years. It was in the history of the United States presidents. They all passed away in office except for two. Uh, and it was really the last two. So maybe it's because our medical is better now or because the, you know, Secret Service is better now or whatever. I don't know that they're living through the cycle. But but some stuff goes down with these presidents, in other words. So, I you know, whoever takes office, if it's, if it's Trump or Joe Biden, there's going to be some problems uh, for this particular president. Um, I wouldn't want to do that. Though people have said... Um, uh, you know, well, knowing that I don't want to, I don't want to vote because I wouldn't want to, you know, have somebody get harmed or whatever. But I would say, look, if it's a person's, like, if that's what they wanted, if they wanted to have that, every person that, that goes into a presidency must know, you know, that there is potential for some kind of thing happening and maybe they would be dying doing what they love, you know? Um, you know, so there, there's a different way of looking at it. Um, I know people that are like firemen or police officers or people who, you know, are, you know, chronic, like, let's say, uh, professional skydivers. And if they died that way, they would be happy because they would be doing something they love. So, you know, so anybody has any questions, uh, I'm, I'm missing these, uh, a lot of people are saying they're saying prayers. Yes. It's a heavy time. Uh, yeah, there might be might be a lot of, uh, things going down. Um, and, uh, so yeah, if anybody has any questions, y'all are kind of silent. I think you're silently watching. <laughs> uh, um, but yes. So in other words, there's not a lot going on as far as like, this is happening and this is how it, really, it's just Mercury is just stopped up really. And then we have the last quarter lunar cycle on Sunday, by the way. So if you're, let me just say one thing about that and then I'll, and then I will pull cards. I'm going to use my newer deck, newer to me, which is Archangel Gabriel deck. Um, and I'm really excited about this because Gabriel was a messenger, right? And we we have we we don't have a messenger uh, week this week. Merc Mercury's a messenger, and he's all clogged up. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we need to give Mercury some Drano or something because <laughs> he's he's all clogged up. So um, let's see. Uh, yes. Oh, you're welcome, Lori. Um, Andrea said, very, very interesting. That's why everybody was silent, like, like listening. Uh, Lisa said, in surprise, uh, oh, okay. In regards to a surprise potential career opportunity, any insight? Oh, yeah, yeah. And Andrea, I want to talk about that, too. Because that's some crazy stuff. So if you're watching it on YouTube, by the way, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like and share on there as well. Because um, I am building my YouTube channel and it, it's really good if you like it and subscribe. Um, so and uh, Andrea asked, what about UVM with uh, Mercury? Will the system be fixed soon and who hacked it? Um, let's see. I don't know about who hacked it. I wasn't, I didn't uh, tap into that. Um, I do think it's somebody foreign. It doesn't feel like here, uh, United States, it feels like something foreign. I know they were saying Russia, but maybe it was like, Iran or Iraq or something, I was getting an I word. Anyway, so, so for those of you who are watching from out of state, just to give you a little background, UVM Medical System, which is like the entire medical system for the state of Vermont, got hacked and, and it's like it, they can't access the records. And I think when was that, Thursday or Friday? But it's all Mercury, right? Mercury is our, our all of our stuff and and so it's horrible because people can't get their medical history. They can't like look to see what medicines that you were taking. I mean, it's really crazy. So, whoa. Yeah, there was a bad problem with this. Look at that. Trusting lamb fell out, um, Andrea. Trusting lamb. So somebody, that's a wolf's in sheep's clothing. Somebody was naughty here. Somebody was not, didn't have good intentions, uh, was trying to hurt us. That's basically what that card is. And I just flew out just to let you know, uh, about the, about the hacking. So, um, so let me, uh, just see, will it be up and running soon? God, there's a lot of energy around this girl. 
And of course, all the cards flipped out. Woo, we got Mars, the God of War, which is the card, by the way, I was getting for Donald Trump. However, we do have the scepter, which 27, 2 plus 7 is 9, 9 is Mars, Mar this is Mars. This means try, try, try again, and we will succeed. And then we get this card. It was a breakup, uh, you know, with the medical system. Um, okay, so what I feel is going to happen is I am getting something with the number 11. Hopefully it's not on the 11th because that's like, geez, over a week away. But I am getting something with the number 11. So I don't know if it's like 11 days. Yeah, 11. Or it could be, I guess it could be 11 days or it could be on the 11th. So I do think it's going to come back on, but it's going to be a mess. It's just a mess. The whole thing is a mess. So I hope that helps. So yes, that is a Mercury problem. And just to let you know, right now Mercury is kind of going over the East Coast. You know how I always have those maps usually and I can look at things? That's basically where Mercury is going. Okay, so Lisa, I was going to answer a question for you. I apologize. Um, I just got excited about the... <laughs> about the question um okay lisa in regards to a surprise career opportunity what is what is the uh angels want you to know about career opportunity well this doesn't surprise me at all okay lisa by the way is my like astro twin we have a lot of same uh planets uh in our charts and like kind of a similar layout girl you got Okay, agent or manager, girl, your boss tag, uh, hashtag, hashtag boss lady. Your work expands its reach as you partner with a professional that can help you. So whoever this person is that gave you the agent or a manager, but I actually think you're going to be a manager or a boss or supervisor or something. Um, so, but basically it's one of those things that this person is a helper. This is a really good positive um, thing for you. Just to let you know, Lisa, um, uh, it's going to be a good, a good move. I would trust the person you, I don't know why, but I'm getting like, should I trust this? Like I keep getting this like little feeling about it. Um, and so I don't know. I hope that, I hope that helps. <laughs> yes. Uh, Lori said 11 is a November number. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the 11th month, but I have a feeling it's going to maybe be another week or so. So it might be on or before the 11th. Um, that, that the system, I feel like they get it back in like chunks. So like, it's almost like we get part of the records back and then part of it's missing. And then another piece of the records come back. I don't know why, but I feel like the medical records come back in, in, um, sections or something, um, which is probably going to be confusing too. I mean, even that's going to be confusing, but we got to wait for Mercury to get up and moving again. Now, next week on the 10th, Mercury is going to be moving enough that it's actually going to move out of Libra into back into Scorpio again. So we'll be, have some movement. Okay. By, by after this weekend, we'll have some movement just to let you know. Okay. So Andrea said a guy, oh, she wants to know how a boy feels about her. <laughs> I don't know. Let's look. Let's look. Oh, the card, the, uh, Lisa said the job seems to have some bad energy from past people who took the role. You know, Lisa, I would still give it a shot because you have good energy and, you know, sometimes we can change our, like, kind of the, our little nexus in our little area of the world. We can change it with the positive energy and you have good energy. So I would say go ahead and get in there and spread your sunshine, you know, because I feel like that's contagious, you know. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you might have to get rid of some people. I mean, there might be a couple people you have to like, you know, uh, but that's okay. You know, if they are negative Nellies, then that's what needs to happen. Okay. Andrea wants to know about the boy with the first name of D. Okay. Let's see. Does, what's the deal with this? What's the deal with this? Hmm. This is a good card. This is a good card. Um, I feel like as if this D person is a new person. I don't know if you, if you've just met them or it's a new association has a new feeling around it. Um, oh my goodness. I don't know if I should show this on camera, but that's Venus, the goddess of love and beauty. I don't know. Hopefully I won't get in trouble with YouTube. <laughs> 
Venus, the goddess of love and beauty, okay? And that's an, a piece of artwork, okay, just to let you know, uh, the card. Um, but yes, and so that's love, okay, just to let you know, uh, there is definitely some good vibes here happening. Uh, do you happen to know what the person's sign is, Andrea? Um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's a good thing. I would give it a shot. I mean, if something that you want, I would, I would uh, just sort of... Um, uh, give it a shot and talk to them and see what see what happens. It has a new feeling around it, so it hasn't taken hold yet. Venus, the goddess of love and beauty. I said the word love, which everybody gets like, ooh, it's love, you know. I mean, but sometimes if it's a new thing, it's puppy love, you know. It's like a new little crush or a new little thing. It's not the big love with the big L, okay, the big love word. Um, so it's us. It's the it's the it's the little L instead of the big L. <laughs> So I hope that that helps. Um, oh, Libra Sun. Yeah, that would be perfect for you. Definitely perfect for you. Okay, so uh, let's see. I don't think there's any other questions. Um, I'm going to pull a card, a collective card for everybody who is watching. And what do you guys need to know for this week? And, uh, you know, moving forward, this is crazy times we're in. I love Archangel Gabriel. So we're going to be asking... Uh, what does the universe need us to know as a collective card? I'm going to pull one card for everybody here that, what do you all need to know? What's the, what's the most important thing as we move through this election, move through the week, uh, that the universe could get, give us as a guidance? Editor, the card of editor. Okay. It's funny because that's Mercury. Really, if you think about it, he's sitting there at the typewriter. Your writing or other creative projects benefits from outside help and support. So right now, that's kind of, that's that's really pretty much the vibe that we have going on all week um, with Mercury and with, um, you know, all the stuff. Even you guys are quieter than I've ever really seen you guys for a long time, you know. Everybody's just needing, we're a little blocked right now. We need a little additional help. We need a little additional information. Um, we want to make sure we check and double check and triple check our work um reread emails reread text don't try to shoot off the hip and then because we'll get yourself in the hot water editor means your writing or other creative projects benefits from outside help and support and even if you double check your work or somebody else looks at your stuff or maybe you get additional help that's all really good stuff because it's it goes along with all that mercurial stuff that we're just having communication problems, communication issues. So guess what? If your if your little love crush goes MIA on you, or you know you don't hear, everybody's kind of going through something right now. Try to be understanding. Try not to be triggered or to have you know like anxiety and frantic feelings. Mercury not moving is kind of anxious because it's kind of like, come on, come on, come on, you know? Um, and it can be a little ang anxiety producing. So we just want to know. Um, and, and by the way, when I asked about the election, <laughs> We're going to be counting and recounting and counting and recounting those ballads and and there needs to be a recount. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, that's what I was kind of talking about during during this broadcast. So whatever ends up happening, okay, we're all going to need to take a collective deep breath. Let's try to love each other. Let's try to love our neighbors. I don't care how you're voting or what you're doing. Like, let's let's pull together. I mean, like when you guys have seen my family out in Colorado was the fires. I mean, nothing matters when you don't even have toothbrush or toothpaste or you lost all your house, you lost your pets. You know, there's there's tragedies. You don't care who's who's voting for what if you need a sandwich. You know, I mean, like that's the thing. I mean, like we have to all kind of really take a deep breath and know that basically it's one of those things that right now we just have to be human. We have to we have to love each other and have that fellow brethren, you know, kind of feeling that we're all humans, we're all in this together. And it kind of doesn't matter um, how everybody votes and how this stuff, you know, kind of happens. Um, there's a lot of contention right now. But if you know, if you need, if you need, you know, something that we're, we're in this together. So we need to be 
nice to our neighbors, nice to our families and all that. We can respectfully disagree, you know, it's okay. Um, and so I love all of you. I'm sending you guys lots of love, lots of, lots of heart bubbles and all that. Thank you for, for being patient with me. If you've been texting me or calling me, by the way, if you would like to have a personalized astrological session, please feel free to text me. Text me really is the best way to get a hold of me because that's like kind of right in my face. And, um, I will send you all big, big heart bubbles. No matter what happens, we, we just have to send out some good energy. All right. <laughs> Bye everybody. Have a great week.